In this video, I want to continue to use the central limit theorem, but I want to focus on the differences between the wording of two very similar questions and what the difference between the two is. So here we go. Example two says this, the mean height of a woman in the United States is 64.1 inches. The standard deviation of the height for these women is 2.71 inches. Assuming that the heights are normally distributed, find the following. The probability of randomly selecting a woman with a height less than 66 inches. Now I want to focus in on this. I am looking at one woman. I want to know the probability of randomly selecting a single woman with a height less than 66 inches. Now in part B down here, it says find the probability that a sample of 10 women will have a mean height that is less than 66 inches. There's a big difference between these two questions. In this question, part A, I am just looking at a single woman. But in part B, I am looking at a sample of 10 women. Okay, as soon as I see this sample, I know that in the one on the bottom, I am going to use the central limit theorem because I'm dealing with a sampling distribution. Whereas in the top one, part A, if I'm dealing with just a woman, a single woman, then I am going to use the normal model. In both cases, I am going to find a z-score and then use that z-score to find the area under a bell-shaped curve. But for the second one, part B, my z-score formula is a little bit different. So let's look at, take a look at part A. Since this is for one woman, I can use a normal distribution because it, the example tells me that they are normally distributed. And all I have to do is find a z-score for 66 inches. And once I find the z-score for 66 inches, I can place that on my picture, shade appropriately, and then find the area of the shaded region. The z-score for using the normal model is x minus the population mean divided by the population standard deviation and x in this case is 66. The population mean is given to me, it's 64.1 inches, and the standard deviation of the population is 2.71 inches. So this will be 64.1 divided by 2.71. And when I do the math, I'm gonna go ahead and do this off to the side, 66 minus 64.1 divided by 2.71 is, approximately 0 0.70. Well, in the middle of my distribution, the z-score is always 0. So a z-score of 0.7 is going to be right about here. And it tells me, I, it asks me to find the probability that a single woman or a randomly selected woman has a height that is less than 66 inches. So I'm looking for this shaded region, the area of this shaded region. Well, let me jump to my calculator and I'm going to use normal CDF. So second, VARS number two. My left hand boundary goes on forever and ever and ever, so I'm going to use negative 99. And then my right hand boundary is 0.7. Close my parentheses and I find that the area of this shaded region is about 75.8%. So the probability that a randomly selected woman will have a height that is less than 66 inches is about 75.8%. But what about this second example? What is the probability that a sample of 10 women will have a mean height that is less than 66 inches. Well, when I'm dealing with sampling distributions, one of the things that I know, because it is a property of a sampling distribution, is that it is normal shaped, it's bell shaped and symmetric. The biggest thing that's gonna change here is that my z-score is no longer going to be x minus mu divided by sigma, it's going to be this x minus the mean 
of my sampling distribution, which is mu with a little subscript x bar, this is the mean of the sampling distribution, divided by the st population standard deviation over the square root of my sample size. Now, to get more information on this formula, you can watch some of my previous videos and that might help you out. So let's go ahead and fill in what we know. Well, x is still 66. The mean of the sampling distribution is always going to be equal. This is just a property of sampling distributions. The mean of the sampling distribution will always be equal to the population mean. So the mean of the sampling distribution is still 64.1. Divided by the standard deviation of the population, 2.71 all over the square root of my sample size. And my sample size is right here, 10, 10 women. All right, let's go ahead and plug this into the calculator. Now, I highly recommend that you put parentheses around your numerator and around your denominator. If you do this properly, then you should get the right value, the right z-score. So here we go. Close your parentheses for the denominator and for the uh, square root. And we end up getting a z-score of 2.217. Or let's go 2.22. Round off to two decimal places. Well, since the shape of a sampling distribution is bell-shaped and symmetric, I can use the same ideas for normal properties or normal distributions for sampling distributions. Zero... A z-score of 0 is still going to be in the center, which means a z-score of 2.22 is going to be right about here. That's a little bit crooked. Let me straighten that out. There we go. And I still want to know what is the probability that the, the mean of a sample of 10 women will be less than 66 inches. Well, I'm going to go back to my calculator and use normal CDF. So here we go again. Second, VARS, number two. My left-hand boundary is negative 99, comma. My right-hand boundary is 2.22. And there is my probability. Let me give myself a little bit more space. The probability or the area right here is about 98.7%. Now, I just want to point out one last thing, and that's the final answer. Notice that the final answer up here, let me type this out. The final answer for this one should probably say, or should say, the probability, probability, of a randomly selected woman, the probability that, let me change this word, the probability that a randomly selected woman will have a height less than 66 inches is about 75.8%. Now the second question doesn't talk about the height of a single woman. The second question should look like this. The probability that a sample of 10 women will have, whoops, I misspelled women, will have a mean height of less than, a mean height that is less than 66 inches is about 98.7%. There's a difference between these two answers. Okay, so if you need to go back and, and just rewind a little bit and read these again, that would, be, that would be advised. But anyways, here's another example, and I hope that this is helping you.